Hello, I am Dr. Mukda Raut, a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist and a clinical reproductive immunologist. We have centers, Dr. Raut's Center for Reproductive Immunology in Mumbai, Nagpur, Pune, Delhi, Hyderabad and soon starting in Bangalore, Chennai and Kolkata where along with my husband Dr. Mohan Raut, we treat couples with unexplained repeated pregnancy loss, unexplained IVF failures and unexplained infertility with the help of lymphocyte immunization therapy and other passive reproductive immunomodulatory treatments. Today let us discuss the factors which affect implantation of an embryo. In mammals, a new life begins with the union of an egg with a sperm, a process known as fertilization. Following fertilization, the zygote undergoes several rounds of divisions and morphogenesis to form the blastocyst, which is an embryonic state with two distinct cell lineages, the outer specialized prophectodomal epithelium and the inner cell mass. The blastocyst participates in the first physical and physiological interaction with the maternal endometrium to initiate implantation with a bidirectional crosstalk essential for normal implantation for the success of pregnancy. Implantation is a crucial stage in human reproduction where the fertilized egg attaches to the uterine wall to initiate pregnancy. Any disturbances in this process will give adverse outcomes for subsequent development including decidualization and placentation with potential loss of pregnancy. The implantation of the embryo in humans involves several stages. The first stage is apposition where the blastocyst which is a ball of cells formed after fertilization just comes in contact with the uterine lining or the endometrium. In the second stage or adhesion, the specialized cells on the surface of the blastocyst attach to the specific receptors on the endometrial surface, securing the embryo to the uterine wall. The third step is invasion, where the blastocyst begins to penetrate the endometrial lining, facilitated by enzymes that help create a channel for further implantation. In the fourth phase, there is syncytialization. Some cells from the blastocyst form a structure called the syncytiotrophoblast, which invades further into the endometrial tissue, allowing the embryo to access the maternal blood vessels. And in the fifth stage or decidualization, the endometrial tissue undergoes changes becoming thicker and more vascularized, creating a specialized area called the decidua, which provides nourishment and support to the developing embryo. The final stage is vascularization, where the syncytiotrophoblast connection with the maternal blood vessels, allowing the exchange of nutrients, oxygen and waste products between the embryo and the mother. Throughout these stages, the embryo needs to synchronize its development with the receptive state of the endometrium. The receptivity of the endometrium is vital for the embryo to implant and establish a connection with the maternal or mother's blood vessels. Embryo implantation occurs in a limited time period known as the window of implantation. These two events are precisely regulated by the mother's hormones, in particular ovarian estrogen and progesterone. And any disruption in this delicate coordination can lead to implantation failure, contributing to the perceived inefficiency of the process in humans. So now let us see the factors which affect implantation. There are some known factors and yet some unknown factors. The first is age which can influence implantation. 
older women have reduced endometrial receptivity and fertility. Chronic diseases like diabetes and high blood pressure can also affect the receptivity of the uterine lining and hinder implantation. Hormonal balance plays a significant role in successive implantation with progesterone levels being essential for preparing the uterine lining. Certain medical conditions such as polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS and uterine abnormalities can impact the implantation process. Also lifestyle factors like smoking, excessive alcohol consumption and drug use can decrease implantation and success rates. Stress and psychological factors may affect hormone levels potentially impacting the chances of successful implantation. Infections in the reproductive tract can lead to inflammation and damage the endometrial lining affecting implantation. Hormonal disorders such as thyroid dysfunction can disrupt the delicate hormonal balance needed for successful implantation. Poor nutrition and low or high body weight may reduce fertility and impair the implantation process. Genetic factors also influence the development of the embryo, affecting its ability to implant properly. In some cases, there is a history of recurrent miscarriages, which can lead itself to implantation difficulties. And the presence of certain antibodies in the woman's body may interfere with the implantation process. And in assisted reproductive technologies like IVF or in vitro fertilization, implantation success can also depend on the quality of the embryo and the timing of the transfer. Now, in spite of correcting all the above factors of implantation failure, a significant number of patients face implantation failure. It has been observed in a study by Coot et al. in 2019 that only 49% of recurrent implantation failure patients ultimately achieved live birth. This indicated that approximately 50% of patients of recurrent implantation failure may not ultimately complete their family goals. Emerging evidence shows that in these 50% of couples, the problem is immunological. The immune system's response to the embryo can lead to rejection of pregnancy, leading to implantation failure. A better understanding of the underlying immunological mechanisms governing embryo implantation will help to generate new strategies to rectify implantation failure and improve pregnancy rates in women. In these situations, lymphocyte immunization therapy and other immunomodulatory treatments can play a very important role. Thank you.